Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. As Ukraine continues its counteroffensive against Russia, the U.S. could announce as soon as today that it's supplying Ukraine with a critical but controversial weapon. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the details from Washington. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. This is a very calm 77 degrees for now because we are anticipating triple digits over the weekend, but I'm gonna get a check in with Justin very soon. Hi, good morning, happy Friday. It is July 7th and I'm gonna go right over to Justin because I'm like, tell me it's not true. Ho hopefully it's just double digits. <laughs> Wait, you, you want me to lie to you? Cause, sure, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it, I'm sorry. Uh, yesterday was nice though. Yeah. There's that. We only got up to about 90 or so because we had some clouds and rain. We do have a few showers this morning, so we could see a, a bit more rain before this is all said and done. But really, things are starting to wind down in the rain department. And temperatures are starting to crank up. As we look at the uh, authority radar right now, we've got some showers down towards Beeville, Kennedy, some very light stuff around Pleasanton. But this is working north, and we're noticing a few light returns here around San Antonio at this hour. So yeah, it's possible we could see some light showers and maybe a few wet roadways here and there this morning. We'll keep an eye on the radar. Uh, and you, you may want to grab the umbrella just in case, but the, the coverage this afternoon is not you know, going to be like it was yesterday. A little less in the way of rainfall and downpour. So weather headlines, uh, yeah, only a small chance of rain today. Then our heat high is back. Uh, tropics also starting to get a little more active in the Pacific, and we've got a new forecast out. We're going to tell you about that and what it means for the Atlantic hurricane season. Looks like things may get a little more busy. Uh, more on that in just a bit, but we got to get over to Stephen now. It's a busy morning in the traffic department. It's only 4.30. Right. Never good when I'm on, Justin. And you know what? Things aren't looking good behind me. Let's get a wider look at Transguide, show you what's taking place at 35 at Somerset. Over on the south side, you can see that traffic is pretty much at a standstill here. Unfortunately, we do have a very serious crash right now. No word yet on how many vehicles were involved or if there were any injuries reported. Let's hope everyone's doing okay, but I know traffic is not looking okay. Let's just get a look there. You can see it's bumper to bumper and 35 tends to be one of those busy spots as folks are making their way out of the Alamo City and let's say over to Lytle this early in the morning. So this could impact your commute if you are heading out the door in the next few minutes. Let's now get a look at the map because what we see here is something that's not great. That uh, portion of our map has been shaded out. That is an indicator that all lanes have been shut down in the southbound uh, southbound lanes of I-35. So it's an area that we're going to have to watch very closely as the morning commute does get rolling. This could be a pretty bit big area where we're going to see congestion. So we'll keep an eye on that. But I do have to take a drive over here now to I-10 westbound at Callahan Road. There were reports of a vehicle fire that came in just around 3 this morning, and it does look like we still have a little bit of congestion out in the area, but uh, talk to our friends at Transguide. We know that crews are out there working to clean up some sort of spill, but we'll get some more details as the morning does roll on. Hopefully we won't see any more issues, but as we give you a wide look at the map, take a look at that. Still a lot of active construction in there, and some of it is still uh, actually wrapping up along 281 in the northbound lanes uh, right around near Hildebrand. So we'll get a look at that a little later on, but the big issue of the morning is going to be here at 35 at Somerset. Make sure to have your KSAT mobile app downloaded. With those notifications turned on, we just sent a push alert out a few minutes ago, so we'll keep an eye on this area and let's hope for a better update a little later on. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. A man is fighting for his life after a shooting. This all happened last night outside a gas station on Old Pearsall Road, just out of Loop 410 on the southwest side. And that's where officers tell us that the man was shot at least one time. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition, and right now police do not have any suspects. This morning, a man is in jail accused of sexually assaulting a child. This is 62-year-old Felix Marfel. The 10-year-old girl he is accused of assaulting said Marfel inappropriately touched her. Now, Sheriff Javier Salazar says BCSO recently received texts from Marfel to the girl's mother that were, quote, apologetic in nature. The sheriff also expressed concern that there may be other victims going back decades. He encourages anyone who may have been assaulted by Marfel to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Now to the war in Ukraine as Kyiv's forces continue a steady counteroffensive against Russian troops. The Biden administration could be close to announcing it's supplying Ukraine with cluster munitions, which can strike several targets at once. That development comes after a deadly Russian airstrike in Kyiv close to Ukraine's border with Poland. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest from Washington. Far from the front lines of eastern Ukraine, a search for survivors amid smoldering rubble in Lviv. 
At least seven killed in that western city after one of Russia's heaviest missile attacks on a civilian area since its invasion last year. The Russian airstrike coming as Ukraine remains focused on retaking territory in its steady counteroffensive. ABC's Martha Raditz asking Ukraine's President Zelensky about the effort. What is your assessment of how the counter offensive is going right now? All of us, we want to do it faster because every day means new losses of Ukrainians. Pentagon officials are not ruling out providing cluster munitions to Ukraine. That is something that is under consideration. Cluster munitions, which Russia is now using, are shells packed with smaller bombs that explode and strike targets across a wide area. The munitions also highly criticized because they can also leave unexploded fragments behind, risking injury and death to civilians. Many U.S. allies have signed a treaty banning their use. Zelensky urging the U.S. and Western allies to send more weapons support now. Food dragging will lead to more lives lost. The U.S. could announce its decision on cluster munitions as soon as today, following back-to-back -back reports of Russian jets harassing U.S. drones over Syria. Moscow says the U.S. was violating protocols. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. This morning, Houston police say a man found alive eight years after he was reported missing may have not been missing at all. 25-year-old Rudy Farias spoke to police, and just yesterday, the Houston police chief said Farias returned home the day after the missing persons report was filed. But his mother is accused of telling police that Farias was her nephew, not her missing son. The Harris County District Attorney says Farias's mother will not be charged for making fictitious names and failure to ID. However, the police chief says she could still be detained for filing a false missing persons report or failing to let police know her son was no longer missing. The investigation into cocaine found at the White House is expected to wrap up early next week. The bag of cocaine was found in a cubby near the ground floor entrance on the West Wing. Staff led tours that typically occur on the weekends pass through that entrance and visitors are asked to leave their phones in those cubbies. Now, a federal law enforcement official says the Secret Service will conclude its probe regardless of whether a suspect is identified. Investigators are reviewing visitor logs and security footage. A huge step today in the fight against Alzheimer's. The FDA granted full approval to a drug proven to slow the progression of the cognitive disease. It's called lecanemab and it's is sold under the name Lecmebi. It works clearing away plaque buildup in the brain and this FDA approval is expected to prompt Medicare and Medicaid services to open up access to coverage for that medicine. That could affect up to a million people with early onset Alzheimer's without insurance covering it. It costs patients roughly $26,000 a year. And time now is 438 and 77 degrees from now. From magnets to some Bose speakers, several popular items are being recalled right now. We're gonna tell you why next. And looking out there with live pan, it's a little humid, but uh, the sun's not out, so we'll take that 77 degrees for now. We are looking forward to a very hot weekend, but we're gonna check in with Justin for all those details later on. And welcome back, it's 441. Now to a recall alert, more than a million old home theater systems are considered fire dangers. And some portable chargers are recalled after a fire on an airplane. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has more, beginning with an urgent warning about magnets, especially if you have young children in your home. Magnet danger. The Consumer Product Safety Commission warns get rid of these magnetic balls because they can be deadly to children who may swallow them. These are Carolina Milano 5 millimeter balls cubes. They're high powered magnets. So here's the problem. If a child swallows super strong magnets, they can attract in the digestive system and perforate the intestines. They can also cause blood poisoning. The company is refusing a recall. This portable charger started a fire on a commercial flight. Now VRURC is recalling 190,000 of them. Model number ODB7 was sold in several colors on Amazon for the past two years. 
Check your subwoofer. Bose is recalling a million bass speakers sold with these home entertainment systems between 1994 and 2007. Acoustamos, Lifestyle, and Companion. They may catch fire. Contact Bose. And is this your child's bike? Womb Bikes out of Austin is recalling 84,000 original kids' bikes. Toddler sizing up because the handlebars can come off while riding. Kids have been hurt. Contact Womb for a repair. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And the time now is 4.43 and 77 degrees for now. Just ahead, we're going to show you more of this video just released that shows how two young boys saved a seven-year-old who nearly drowned in a pool. Hi, welcome back. The time now is 4.45. New surveillance video shows how two young boys saved a seven-year-old who was drowning in a pool. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. You're looking at a group of heroes who prevented a tragedy. That seven-year-old Griffin Emerson, seen here playing in the shallow end of his apartment pool. He struggles to keep his head above water. Almost a full minute goes by. Griffin sinking to the bottom. 12-year-old Noah and 8-year-old Weston notice what's happening. Watch as Weston jumps in. He goes down and pulls Griffin to the surface. And this morning on GMA, we're speaking to those two heroic boys. I like just started like pacing back and forth and wondering like if he's going to be okay. His head was going up and down. And I knew he wasn't okay. The rescuers were 12 and 8 years old and they recognized it so fast. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more of our exclusive interviews and the pool safety messages every parent needs to hear. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Hey, welcome back. It's 446. Did you all make it outside yesterday? No. 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 Well, no, I did for a story I was at uh, okay. early in the morning. It yeah. was a little humid. Yeah. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. But Passing showers here and there. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't too bad. You know what? We did have some slick roads yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think that contributed to a lot of crashes uh, that we saw. And you know what? This morning, we still have a few issues out there. Yeah, we've been busy. Yeah, let's get a quick look around town, guys. Well, actually, we have a shot here. Uh, this is over along 35 at Leon Creek. It's a different viewpoint. It's that same crash we talked about uh, near Somerset Road. Uh, our friends at Transguide, I spoke to them earlier this morning. We have a few incidents that have definitely slowed folks down. So this is what's causing a slowdown in the southbound lanes of 35 if you're heading out of town. Let's get a look there at our map because what we see is that a portion has been shaded out, and that's never a good sign because it's a good indicator that we have traffic that are, pardon me, the high way has been shut down. So we're going to watch this closely. We do have a push alert out th at this time, so make sure to have that KSAT mobile app downloaded. Notifications turned on. Taking a drive up here, 281 northbound at Hildebrand Avenue. If your travels take you up north, you will see some flashing lights out there, but don't worry, that's construction that should be wrapping up. We'll keep a close eye on that, but there's a little bit of congestion taking place at this time. So just be mindful of those text dot cruises early in the morning. And as we take one more drive here, there is still a vehicle fire that was reported by TxDOT along I-10 westbound near Callahan Road. Uh, this area had uh, likely seen some sort of spill, but uh, earlier there was a little bit of a delay that we our map was picking up. Looks like that has already improved, so let's hope we'll have some better news to report in that area maybe in the next few minutes. But as we give you a wide look at the map, we have a lot of construction and, of course, some of those issues out there. Again, a shot at 35 at Leon Creek where we do have those flashing lights off in the corner. We're going to watch this area closely, but Justin, yeah, yesterday we saw some of those slick roads. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was contributed to some of those crashes we saw. I wouldn't doubt it. And yesterday was uh, really nice considering we had showers on the radar. It was cooler. We struggled to get above 90 yesterday. When's the last time we could say that? Uh, we do have a few more showers this morning, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but this is kind of the last of it. Uh, we'll see a few showers maybe into the afternoon, but beyond that, our rain chances pretty much go away. So let me show you what's going on right now. We've got some light stuff trying to work its way into Medina County, seeing a little bit of activity near Bear County. Nothing that's heavy, nothing that's going to really cause a lot of issues, but you may notice you have to use your windshield wipers briefly this morning if one of these showers does pass by. And I looked at some of the rainfall totals yesterday, really nothing more than a quarter of an inch. So there wasn't big numbers out there, and that's kind of the nature of this activity as it uh, moves south to north this morning. Here's what we have to look forward to. Yesterday, the highest temperature in the country was in Arizona. It was 118. That's not a forecast. Okay, we're not going to get numbers like that. But this heat high that's uh, sitting over Arizona and New Mexico does move in our direction. And when it does, 
uh, it's going to crank up our temperatures too. Uh, on the periphery of that high, we've got some big storms going through parts of the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma. Severe thunderstorm watch boxes there. That cluster of storms may hold on as it moves down towards uh, Dallas a little bit later this morning, but uh, it is not moving in our direction. What we have down here is just some leftover tropical moisture. We're still seeing some showers and storms down near Corpus Christi. And then a few showers as we showed you uh, making their way up towards San Antonio. Our forecast today, spotty showers this morning, I'd say through 9, 10 o'clock. And then uh, the radar may quiet down a little bit before we head into the afternoon and we get a few more isolated showers. But it's just not going to be as widespread as yesterday. That's the bottom line. We've lowered rain chances to about 20 percent uh, today. Yesterday we had a 40 percent. Uh, so that's that's kind of the difference. 78 right now in cloudy. Dew point is at 69. Heat index is at 80. Dew points are up there. They're not too, too bad, uh, right around 70. And uh, we'll still have a heat index to contend with today. It'll feel like it's close to 100 here in San Antonio. We're forecasting a heat index close to 97. Some places will get a heat index up over 100 later today. So just uh, heads up there uh, with the humidity staying in place. Extended forecast. 98 Saturday, 100 Sunday. Here comes the heat high, and you see the difference that it makes. We're going 102 Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, don't send me any, any emails. It's not my fault. It really it isn't. Uh, but uh, that's just uh, where, we are, where we are as far as uh, uh, the weather goes and this heat. It is uh, going to be some big-time heat next week, and we'll probably have some uh, heat indices to deal with as well. So. Hmm. Is what it is, as my friend Stephen would say. Yes. It's not what it's not. It's, it's not, not what it's not. not. <laughs> and it may be what it may be. Yeah. Well, at least we know so we can get mentally prepared for next week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've already had uh, one of these big uh, heat waves, and now it's just kind of working its way back in. But it is summer here in South Texas, so that, we know we know how to deal with it. That is true. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Time now is 452 and 77 degrees for now. Up next, a first look at the two new movies hitting theaters this weekend. And a look at your lotto numbers. We have pick three, nine, six, two, fireball six, daily four, eight, five, zero, zero, fireball four, cash five, five, 14, 27, 34, 35. Your Texas two step, four, 15, 26, 29, bonus ball 25. Good luck. Welcome back. It's 4.55. We have an update on the Hollywood Writers' Strike, plus two new films open in theaters this weekend. The latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Contract talks between Hollywood actors and studios have been extended until next week, and if there's no deal, a strike is very likely. And for Barry star Stephen Root, he's mostly concerned about one thing. It's the losing of residuals uh, via streaming. He tells me when Barry was just on HBO, the residual money was good. But when in later seasons, episodes went to streaming on HBO Max and then Max. And so our, our residuals went from here to here. And what I what I want to fight for is the younger people who are residuals will start out here or even less unless we do something about it. The studios have said they're open to restructuring residual payments. Talks have been extended through next Wednesday. This weekend, Ashley Park and friends want to take you on a joyride. Her new film, Joyride, is a raunchy R-rated comedy with heart. And she says hopefully it'll make you feel all the feels. You know, in real life, you can go from crying to laughing so fast. And I think that comedy and drama and like trauma really live in the same kind of world. Joyride, getting glowing reviews. It and the horror sequel Insidious, The Red Door are the only two films opening wide this weekend. And peace and love to Ringo Starr. The Beatles drummer is 83 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens at ABC News, Los Angeles. Happy birthday. Time now, 456 and 77 degrees for now. So it's a talk of the city and the country right now. Victor Wimbayama's security allegedly hitting pop star Britney Spears and almost knocking her to the ground. Up next, how Britney and Wimby have responded so far. And resources in some parts of Texas are running dry as farmers try to keep livestock alive. Up next, how a local goat farmer is getting creative to make ends meet. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide. So Stephen's saying there's construction here off of 281 at Hildebrand, but we're going to be checking in with him very soon. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the heat wave continues across the country with temperatures expected to be in the 90s or hotter and heat advisories in at least six states. 
Up next, which dates will be the hottest? And let's look out there with live cam here at home. It's pretty tolerable. We can take that 77 degrees. However, Justin's going to be talking about a very warm forecast just ahead. Hi, good morning, happy Friday. It is July 7th and we hope you had a wonderful week. And normally we'll talk about the heat first, but today we're gonna, he's checking with uh, Steven because traffic has been kind of a mess this morning. It, it has, Steph. Uh, typically anytime I jump in early, there is an issue out on the roadway. We had at least two that were reported. I do wanna start here at 281 at Hildebrand though, as we get the camera on rotation, some of these ca cameras go pretty fast, uh, but we had some construction, we had a major crash and a vehicle fire. All of it was slowing folks down that were making a, the commute this early in the morning, but as we can see around town 35 at Somerset, we have better news to report. It looks like the crash that was slowing folks down has already cleared out, so that's great news for anyone that has to head south uh, near Somerset Road. But uh, remember, this was a pretty serious crash where it slowed folks down. They had to shut down a portion of the highway. It looks like it has since reopened, so happy to report that, and let's hope everyone else is doing okay. Taking a drive up over here to 281, uh, we still have the construction that's wrapping up in the northbound lanes near Hildebrand Avenue. There were reports of a crash overnight, but it does still look like we have crews out there and that could just be textile crews working to improve our roadways. So just make sure to watch out for them as the, the morning commute does get moving. Taking a drive over here, we still have that vehicle fire that uh, looks like it's still being reported by TxDOT. It could be in the clearing process. Again, we saw a little bit of those slowdowns taking place in the westbound lanes of I-10. That looks to be a lot better than what we saw when it initially started the newscast. Giving you a wide look now at our metropolitan area. We're back to normal, guys. It is quiet out there and there's still plenty of road work taking place in and around the Alamo City. We'll have more on that a little bit later on. But right now, Justin, things look a lot better out on the roadways. Good to hear. Good to hear. You know, yesterday was a fairly busy day rain wise. I mean, relatively speaking, because it's been such a while, uh, such a long time since we've seen some good rain around the area. Had some good downpours, kept temperatures down. It was fantastic. Uh, today's not going to be that way. I mean, we are going to see some showers, but temperatures are going to start to ramp back up. And by the time we get into the weekend, you may not like the forecast so much. Uh, here's a look at the radar right now. We do have some of those showers trying to work their way up uh, into San Antonio. Most of this is pretty light. Uh, but we're noticing some activity around Pearsall, Divine, and uh, the Medina County. And then you run into some heavier stuff as you get down nor near Corpus Christi. Uh, but around San Antonio, it's really light. Uh, nothing more than a few sprinkles, and we may see a few of those uh, this morning. Nothing that should make uh, for any real big issues on your morning commute. There's heavier, heavier stuff down towards Corpus Christi. So Rockport, Port A. Uh, getting blasted this morning with some storms. We've got some lightning strikes down there too, and then some heavier rain over towards Alice west of Corpus Christi. But I think a lot of this stays south of San Antonio, so uh, we're just not going to get a lot of heavy rain. And as we look at the uh, situation, our heat high starts to move back in today. That little low that was bringing us some tropical moisture moves away. So that means temperatures are going to start to ramp up somewhat today, but more so tomorrow and into uh, next week. So by 1 o'clock, 90 degrees, we will keep in a 20% chance of a shower or storm today. Temperatures make their way up to around 94 for a high. Heat index will be somewhere close to 100. Steph. Thank you, Justin. Happening right now, San Antonio firefighters are working to put out a fire in a restaurant on the northeast side of town. It's on Austin Highway, not far from Lenark Drive. And Katrina Weber is live at that scene. Katrina, what can you tell us? Well, the first thing is that it does look like firefighters have knocked down this fire. It's at a Korean restaurant here uh, just behind me. You can see firefighters standing there just making sure everything is out. And you'll notice that they have a ladder extended up to the roof of this restaurant. That's where they've been focusing. Uh, from what I've been told, they've been looking at a, sort of a vent hood on top of the roof as the source of the fire or the area where the fire started. Uh, but it looks like they were able to knock it down quickly. They, I believe they have a fire station not far from here, so they were able to get here quickly when this fire called out just before 4.30. Uh, got it knocked down very quickly. It doesn't look like the damage from this angle is too bad, but we don't know what is going on inside. We'll find out more. And no word on the cause of this fire just yet, but it doesn't appear that uh, they're looking at anything suspicious at this point. Again, they were looking at the vent hood on the top of the roof here. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina.
The future of farming is in question with the ongoing drought. Resources in some parts of Texas are running dry as farmers try to keep livestock alive. But one goat farm in New Braunfels is finding ways to keep the heat from hurting business. They've built a farm facility that allows for more sh shade and airflow. All milking also happens indoors. Now the owner of Goatalicious Imports gets all of his hay for feeding his goats from Kansas because he says Texas cannot keep up with the current demand. We're small enough to where we can keep an eye on all the animals. If, there, if, if we were like a 5,000 animal dairy, we would have animals that would die. Now that it's harder to grow grass in Texas, the price of hay is up. Regal says it cost him thousands of dollars more this summer to get his usual sheep shipment of feed in. Higher prices in animal feed could mean down the line you're going to see higher prices for farm goods in the grocery store to offset that cost. Now to the story that's turning heads, not just in San Antonio, but across the country. So Victor Wimbayama security allegedly hitting pop star Britney Spears and almost knocking her to the ground. This all playing out at a Las Vegas hotel and Spears wanted to take a photo with Wimbayama and try to get his attention. Later at practice, Wimbayama said he had no idea who the person was or even what was happening. Uh, when I came back to the hotel, uh, I had like a, I had forgotten about this event, but the, I mean, I didn't forget about this, but I knew, I, I thought it was no big deal. And, uh, and the, the security of this person told me it was uh, Britney Spears. So I was, first I was like, uh, no, you, you're joking. But uh, yeah, it turns, it turns out it was Britney Spears. And I, <laughs> but uh, I didn't know, cause I didn't see her, I never saw her face. I kept, I just kept walking straight. And, uh, now, Britney Spears took to Twitter saying in part, quote, I recognized an athlete in my hotel lobby as I was heading to dinner. I later went to a restaurant at a different hotel and saw him again. I decided to approach him and congratulate him on his success. She went on to say, quote, his security then backhanded me in the face without looking back in front of a crowd, nearly knocking me down and causing my glasses off my face, end quote. You can watch the full interview with Wimby right now on our website at kset.com. And severe storms hitting parts of the country, but the big story remains the brutally high temperatures. Now, as ABC's Alano Moyes shows us the areas that will see the highest temperatures. It's a heat that's not just uncomfortable. Hey, buddy, hey, can you hear me, man? It's scary. Authorities in Arizona releasing this video of a terrifying moment for two hikers near Tucson. Border Patrol agents airlifting them to the hospital. One hiker suffering extreme heat stress, the other losing consciousness, overcome by the triple digit temperatures. Around the country and around the world, the heat is inescapable and record breaking. Monday was the hottest day the planet has experienced since record keeping began, until the record was surpassed on Tuesday and Wednesday. It is first week of uh, July. We've got climate change. We've got El Nino. These temperatures in the waters behind me, they're above average as well. So yeah, we got a long summer ahead of us. Today, high temps in the 90s are hotter from Maine to Miami, 96 in Vermont, and in the West, heat advisories in at least six states. El Paso expected to hit 105. It's 22nd consecutive day of triple digit heat. We're going to break that record. Uh, 23 is the record as we talked about consecutive 100 plus days. Look at that. Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, we'll break that record. These scorching temperatures amplified by climate change, and we're now seeing one of the most dramatic impacts from our warming climate climate in something called ghost forests. Our Ginger Z visited one in New Jersey. A ghost forest is one of the most striking images where we can see the climate changing and rapidly. You know, coastal forests, they sink and then sea level rises naturally, but we've advanced that sea level rise so quickly, especially here in the mid-Atlantic. We are losing forests because the salt water intrudes on the roots here faster and up to 14 times faster than just 150 years ago. In the coming decades, hundreds of thousands of acres of forests along the U.S. coast are set to suffer the same fate. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Time now, 509 and 77 degrees for now. Threads has only been up for a few days and now Twitter has threatened to sue Meta. We're going to tell you what Twitter has accused Facebook of doing. UT Health San Antonio is getting a huge federal grant up next. Why a big portion of it will be going toward teen health and lowering teen pregnancies. Let's look out there with live cam on this Friday morning. 77 degrees, not too bad for now, but we're going to have to mentally prepare for all the heat we're going to feel today and this weekend. 
We're going to be checking in with Justin about that later on. Hi, welcome back. The time now is 5:12. UT Health San Antonio is receiving a huge federal grant that will go towards their UT Teen Health program. It will also impact our local counties for years to come. Now, UT Teen Health is an initiative of UT Health San Antonio that promotes the health and wellness for those ages 10 to 24. They received a nearly $10 million grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services that will aim to lower teen pregnancies. Now, the grant will cover 38 counties in UT Health San Antonio areas. That program manager of UT Teen Health, Jennifer Todd, explains why these areas are seeing an increase of teen pregnancies. It's a lack of access to educational resources and a lack of access to health care services available. UT Health San Antonio says the birth rate for South Texas is four times higher than the national average. The national birth rate sits at 13.9 per 1,000 girls ages 15 to 19. But here in South Texas, we are seeing a rate of 56.8 per 1,000 girls between the same ages. Through these concerted efforts that these communities can also look forward to the impact that not only will positively affect their current families, but generations ahead um, in Bear County. Money from the grant will be used to create evidence-based programs and positive youth development with the county school districts, clinics, and care programs. The grant will be used over a five-year period. Now to read more about the grant awarded to UT Health San Antonio, you can head over to our website at kset.com. And right now it's 514 and 77 degrees for now. It's almost Prime Day. We're gonna tell you how much Amazon is discounting healthcare in its Prime Day deals. And TikTok launches a music streaming service. We're gonna tell you where it's launching first. Wayfair has nice prices so you can have nice things. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson, we have a kid. And Harold. <laughs> Wayfair's got just what you need. <laughs> Performance fabric, stains don't stand a chance. No chance! Woo! Dog friendly and wallet friendly. Pub crew. Get nice things with nice prices at Wayfair. <laughs> Wayfair, you've got just what I need. New emergency crystals pop and fizz when you throw them back. And who doesn't love a good throwback? New emergency crystals. Throw it back. A wolf in the wild and your dog both share a hunger for meat. So we've added 20% more meat to protein-rich Blue Wilderness. Go wild with Blue Wilderness. Now with 20% more meat. Tech Bytes, a new battle in the social media wars. Twitter is threatening to sue Meta over its new app, Threads. Elon Musk's company says Mark Zuckerberg's new offering stole trade secrets as well as former Twitter engineering employees. Meta denies the claims. Amazon is including a first-time item as part of its Prime Day deals, healthcare. It's offering an exclusive discounted plan through One Medical, a provider Amazon now owns. For a limited time, Prime members can get one year of health care coverage for $144. Finally, TikTok has launched a music service in Brazil and Indonesia to take on Apple Music and Spotify. TikTok Music has many features of its rivals and includes the catalogs of several major record companies. For now, TikTok has yet to comment on any possible UX expansion plans. And those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. It's 518 now. I feel so lonely up here. I feel like we're missing somebody. <laughs> we're missing somebody. Oh, Mark, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just scooch in closer yes. to staff. Yeah. It's <laughs> Mark's on vacation. Uh, Hi, Mark. I mean, I'm sure he's asleep right now. He is. And <laughs> you know what? He was missing out on a lot of crazy traffic that we had this early in the morning. He uh, did. Things have cleared out, so we're looking a lot better. But we have a shot at 35 at Thousand Oaks. There was actually some overnight work that just wrapped up there, so you could see things are moving, which is great. North and southbound lanes just look a little busy, but it also looks like we may have a stalled vehicle out there. I'm seeing some emergency lights flashing off in the distance. Uh, looks like that could be the far left shoulder lane. So we'll find out what's going on there. But for now, drive safe. Check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway. Uh, we still have this active uh, situation happening along I-10 westbound at Callahan Road. This is a vehicle fire that was reported sometime around 3 this morning. And what we're seeing now is a closure in the area, and that is likely due to a spill. Uh, not 
not sure exactly how long it's going to take to reopen. It doesn't seem like it's impacting the main lanes of traffic, so that's the good news, but still be on the lookout for that. Also, better news report here. The construction that was taking place along 281 and the northbound lanes at Hildeburn Avenue has wrapped up, so folks are in the clear there as well. Wider look at the map shows relief for a lot of folks. We did have a situation along I-35 uh, near Somerset Road. That has also cleared out. It was slowing folks down for quite a while, but again, things look a lot better now that we have a wide view of our metro area. But back here on Transcad, we'll keep a close eye on this particular spot. Uh, just check those vehicles before you hit the roads. Make sure to move over or slow down. But Justin, our morning started off busy, but looks like uh, we're heading off into our Friday morning without any major trouble. Good, and I know it's Friday, but I'm kind of salty. Not going to oh, lie to you. Wow. Uh, I didn't get any rain yesterday, and I know a lot of people did. I was not one of those folks, uh, so my yards don't. Dry. Not that we got a lot of rain yesterday. Folks that did get rain, it wasn't much, but it was good to see it on radar. I, I want to switch topics a little bit and talk about the hurricane season. So Colorado State, which puts out a hurricane forecast, uh, put out an update yesterday. Now, they, they were thinking it was going to be a below average season, and then yesterday they kind of uh, switched over to saying it's going to be a higher than average season. Why? Well, because the waters are so warm out in the Atlantic. So now they're thinking 18 named storms nine hurricanes and four major hurricanes, which is a little above the NOAA forecast and above average. Now these forecasts are not perfect, uh, but they give us a general idea that, yeah, maybe things could be a little more active this year. We'll see. Uh, on the Atlantic right now, there's nothing going on. If you remember, we had two tropical storms uh, last month, but nothing right now, at least in the Atlantic. Now, as we go to the Pacific, it is getting active, and you would expect it to be active in the Pacific this time of year, the Eastern Pacific. This uh, little system here, which is moving west and away from land, likely develops into something. And then there's a broad area of low pressure down here that could uh, develop into something. But both of these likely won't affect parts of Mexico or affect our forecast for that matter. Uh, as far as our uh, radar goes right now, we've got some showers trying to get a little bit closer to San Antonio. They didn't have much success. You notice the showers right as they came into Bear County just fell apart. We're still noticing a few light returns around Pearsall, down towards Catua, and you get down towards Corpus Christi. That's where things are far more active. But again, nothing here to uh, worry about this morning. I can't rule out a couple of showers this afternoon, but the really the heavy stuff and the thunderstorms are going to be down near the coast. Rockport and Port A, if you're heading down there uh, today, know there is going to be some rain, but it probably uh, dries out some over the weekend. So it should be good beach weather. Our forecast. Yeah, a couple of isolated showers this morning and then by the afternoon, a couple of spotty showers here and there. But rain chances today are at 20% versus that 40% yesterday, uh, just to give you some perspective. So anything we see today will be few and far between. Uh, and high pressure begins to nudge in from the west. Our little area of low pressure with that tropical moisture moves away. And as our high nudges in, it takes away the rain chances and it brings the heat up. So the high temperatures today around Texas, likely in the 90s. There will be triple digits out west where it has just been baking and our numbers will start to rise in the coming days. Right now we've got 77 and cloudy. Dew point is at 69. Forecast for today just a 20% chance of rain. We'll take it up to about 88 by noontime and then top out somewhere around 94 with partly cloudy skies later today. The extended forecast. A look away if you don't like hot temperatures. Uh, 102 is what we're thinking by Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, sunny skies next week. Well, hopefully it won't go any hotter than 102. I'm not making any guarantees, <laughs> but that's what I was sticking with this morning. I don't, uh, I don't really want to go above that number. No. No. Okay, well, we'll prepare for that for now. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Time now is 523 and 76 degrees for now. Up next, first look at the Bob Marley biopic and the Nun 2 plus YouTube celebrates a big anniversary. Welcome back. It's 526. Reggae pioneer Bob Marley is the subject of a new biopic heading to theaters. CNN's Rick Damagella brings us a first look at the film and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Reggae is a people music. People coming together. Ooh, yeah. Here's your first look at Bob Marley, One Love. The biopic stars Kingsley ben in the role of the reggae legend alongside Lashana Lynch as Rita Marley. Bob Marley, One Love arrives in theaters January 12th, 2024. Sophie, what happened? I think there's something here that's not meant to be. 
The Nun creeps back into theaters. The Nun 2 is the latest entry in the Conjuring universe of films, with Bonnie Ahrens revisiting her horrifying title role. The Nun 2 possesses theaters September 8th. Two is celebrating the 30th anniversary of their Zuropa album with a free live stream of the concert film Zoo TV Live from Sydney. The watch party commences at 3 p.m. Eastern, July 12th at zuropa.u2.com. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Time now, 557, no, 528, sorry about that, 76 degrees for now. President Biden is touting his economic policies, which have been dubbed Bidenomics. Up next, why some lawmakers are not impressed and what the newest jobs report is expected to reveal about the current state of the country's economy. Volkswagen has a new self-driving program starting today, and it's beginning its testing here in Texas. We're going to tell you where and how it's ensuring the safety of its passengers. And ahead on GMSA at 6, school supplies are expensive, and not everyone can afford those classroom essentials. How Westside Church is looking to help 3,000 families in need by August. More economic news being released this morning. This time, it's a monthly jobs report. Up next, why many lawmakers aren't so optimistic about the economy, even though President Biden says he has a plan to turn things around. And looking out there with live cam, hey, not too bad, 76 degrees, we'll take it for now. But we hope you enjoyed that rain yesterday because it looks we may not get some for a while, but we're gonna be talking with Justin very soon. Good morning. Hi Hello. Guys. I Good have morning. enough room to do both hands. <laughs> both hands. <Hey. laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we could do this. We could do I, this. We could do well, this. See, no, my Whoa. Yeah. That's not hey, work. look at that space. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Hugs. <laughs> Happy Sorry. Friday. Yeah. Hugs. Excited. So people who have plans this weekend are going to have to plan maybe to stay indoors if they don't like the heat. Um, or mm -hmm. cool off somewhere else. Well, I mean, look, we're going to be in the upper 90s. We're used to that. It's just uh, it's just kind of sad because the Mother Nature gave us a taste of it yesterday. Yeah. She's kind of like, ah, here's yeah. some rain and then I'm going to take it away. Mm. Uh, it was just kind of a one-day thing. Yesterday was nice. This was the kind of scene we were seeing outside where those clouds kind of billow up into these passing downpours. And if you were lucky enough to get one of those downpours, probably rained pretty hard for about a minute or two and then uh, moved right along. But that was uh, that was the sky yesterday. You know, with all those clouds, it kept temperatures down. We only warmed to around 90 or so. Today will be different in the sense that we're going to get some warmer temperatures, and the weekend will be very different as well next week. As we look at the radar right now, I showed you earlier around Corpus Christi, we're getting a lot of good heavy rain, but that is staying south of us. So where we are up here around San Antonio, it's just not much. We had a couple of showers that were trying to make a run at Bear County. They did not survive, so uh, most of the activity we're seeing now is south of town, and it's still pretty light. Rain chances today will be at about 20%. That's the best we can do. And as we look at the KSAT 12-hour forecast, 81 at 9 o'clock, 83 10 a.m. Noontime, 88. We're up around 94 for high today. There's your 20% chance. We'll leave that in through about dinner time, and then after that, uh, pretty much goes away. So if you have evening plans, it'll be just fine. Just know that the heat index could get near 100 a little bit later today. Roadways were busy earlier. Looks like things have quieted down, Stephen. Just a bit, Justin. Uh, as we get a look here at 10 at Callahan East, we saw flashing lights out there. Let's get a wider look at Transguide to show you what I'm talking about because we did actually have a vehicle fire that was reported in the area sometime uh, around 3 this morning. Looks like those flames have been put out, but what we're seeing now is the aftermath. Uh, according to our friends at Transguide, there was some sort of spill that took place out there. As you can see, first responders have had to close the uh, one of the ramps there. Very difficult to make out exactly exactly what that process looks like uh, just because the shot is a little bit grainy, but let's uh, we can clearly see those flashing lights off in the distance. Let's make sure to move over or slow down anytime you see those first responders out there working to clear things up. Earlier, there was a little bit of a buildup taking place in the westbound lanes. Looks like that's already improved, so better news to report there, but we still have those crews, so just watch out. Wider look at the map does show a better situation than where we started. We had plenty of issues taking place in and around the Alamo City. All of it has since cleared out minus the uh, vehicle fire that we're seeing along I-10 near Callahan. So we get a time to look at uh, some of these travel times. We're not seeing any big delays just yet. 25 minutes along I-10 eastbound if you're heading in from Bernie. 28 minutes, a little bit of a slowdown along 281 southbound traveling in this early and 27 minutes along I-35 southbound if you're traveling in from New Braunfels. But back here, it looks like we still have those 
those flashing lights out at 10 at Callahan East. We'll keep a very close eye on this and let's hope we'll see some of those lanes reopen coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Firefighters are keeping a close watch on a northeast side restaurant. They're making sure the fire they just put out doesn't flare up again. Katrina Weber is live on Austin Highway, not far from Lenark Drive. It sounds like they were able to knock down that fire quickly, Katrina. Yes, they were. Uh, I was talking to a police officer who witnessed this whole thing. He says they had this fire out within minutes. Now, they're also making quick work of the cleanup and clearing out stages. You can see firefighters wrapping up the final hoses here outside this restaurant. This is Ari Rang Korean restaurant. This fire broke out a little bit before 4.30 this morning. Now, according to what we were told by uh, fire investigators, they say this looks like it was accidental, that someone possibly left a, uh, a burner on all night and that is how this fire started. It was contained mostly to that area around the vent. And in fact, we saw firefighters with their ladder out. They were on top of the roof working on the vent hood area, trying to make sure that they put out the fire that had moved up into that system. Uh, they say that it looks like there's more smoke damage than anything inside the restaurant, but uh, it probably will be enough to keep this uh, business closed at least for a little while until they're able to clean things up and uh, get back open again. But again, uh, no injuries reported in this fire, which broke out earlier this morning. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. The Bureau of Labor Statistics releasing its official monthly jobs report this morning. Early indications appear to show the U.S. labor market is still booming. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the Biden White House and some Republicans still have concerns. President Joe Biden at a manufacturing plant in South Carolina Thursday touted his economic policies, which have been dubbed Bidenomics. Investment is working and factories being built and jobs being created happening in rural America, the heartland, all across America. In communities that have been left out and hollowed out, this is what it looks like across the country. According to private payroll processor ADP's National Employment Report released Thursday, U.S. companies added 497,000 positions in June, doubling the estimates of some analysts. I'm not here to declare victory on the economy. I'm here to say we have a plan that's turning things around quickly, but we have a lot more work to do. But not everyone is looking at the overall economy with rose-colored glasses. I want to stop the runaway inflation that we have in this country and get spending under control again in Washington, D.C. That includes former vice president and 2024 Republican presidential candidate Mike Pence, who says the nation needs to do some belt tightening. I will tell you, uh, the path that we are on fiscally in this country is unsustainable. The debt, the borrowing in Washington, D.C. is what set off that inflation that's still hurting in American families. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In Florida, a Lakeland couple has been charged with aggravated manslaughter in the hot car death of their 18-month-old girl. Authorities say she was left in a hot car overnight following a 4th of July party. The sheriff says a husband and wife each thought the other had brought the baby in after they got home. And the husband found the baby in the morning still strapped in the car seat unresponsive. The couple rushed her to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. The sheriff says the heat index that day was 105 degrees and the child's internal body temperature was more than 104 degrees. Authorities say the husband tested positive for meth, marijuana, and alcohol. The wife tested positive for marijuana and alcohol. The Transportation Security Administration says it has intercepted more than 3,300 guns this year. 92% of them were loaded, and if that trend continues, it will exceed 6,600 by the end of the year. That would set a new record only 10 years ago, the TSA stopped just over 1,900 guns all year. If you try to bring a gun on an airplane, it will cost you a $15,000 fine. It's legal to travel with a gun. You just have to put it in a checked bag. You also have to tell the airline and make sure it is not loaded. 
And how much money would you need to feel financially secure? In a new survey, people said they would need to earn on average $233,000 a year to feel financially secure, and that they would need to make $483,000 a year to feel rich or to attain financial freedom. To put those numbers in perspective, the median earnings for a full-time year-round worker is just over $56,000. 72% say that they did not currently feel financially secure, although 46% say they expect to someday. The top reason cited for not feeling secure today, 63% said high inflation, rising interest rates, and housing costs. Time now, 540 and 76 degrees for now. Up next, Volkswagen is test launching self-driving technology in Texas starting today. We're gonna to tell you which city will be the first to see the newest version of this iconic VW bus. And looking out there with live cam, a little humid out there, we're at 76 degrees. Expecting maybe triple digits all next week, but we're gonna check in with Justin for all those details coming up. Welcome back, it's 543. In your morning consumer headlines, Volkswagen is bringing some new technology to its iconic VW bus. The automaker has announced it is test launching self-driving technology using these retro-styled electric micro buses. Now starting today, the program will rev up just up the road in Austin with 10 self-driving ID Buzz electric vans. Now the automaker says each van will also have a human driver on board to ensure safety during the initial test runs. This is the first time VW will test self-driving vehicles in the U.S. The federal government is cracking down on companies that sell edibles resembling popular snack foods. So the FDA and the FTC sent warning letters to six companies that sell products containing Delta 8 THC in packaging that looks like Doritos, Jolly Ranchers, among others. Now, Delta 8 THC is a socaeotive cannabinoid. The agencies say that children and even some adults could mistake the Delta 8 THC products for the real thing. The products are given such names as Double Stuff Stonios for Oreos and Stony Patch for Sour Patch Kids. Time now is 544 and 76 degrees for now. So back to school is just around the corner. Up next, how Westside Church is trying to get supplies for more than 3,000 families in need. Welcome back. Time now is 548. So school supplies can add up and not every family can afford to buy their children new classroom essentials, backpacks or haircuts. It's why a West Side Church is asking the community to pitch in and donate for more than 3,000 families in need come this August. Our Sarah Costa tells us about the long-term impact of these donations and how families can receive that help. And I remember me and my wife, we would go to different churches just trying to get a uniform for my kids back in the days. We're trying to get a haircut. Pastor Jimmy Robles with Last Chance Ministries knows how impactful <laughs> a donated backpack or free haircut can be for a family in need. God has blessed us enough for, for us to be able to now do haircuts and give backpacks. It's why his Westside Church has given away thousands of free school supplies for 17 years. <laughs> and is asking the community for backpack shoes and classroom supply donations for the Hope for the West Side Back to School Bash happening on August 12th from noon to 4 p.m. at Rosedale Park. You can bring a backpack to the church and or you can volunteer your time as well. So there's a lot of opportunities how, how the community can come together and be a blessing to our city. So maybe somebody can't go, but they can actually call and say, hey, listen, I, I can sponsor. Sponsorships start at $25. Robles is also asking any local barbers who can donate their time to give free haircuts for the event or any other vendors who are willing to participate to reach out. We want to protect our children as well. So this benefits actually from all the from elementary all the way to college. For those who would like to sign up to receive school supply donations, make sure to register now on the church's website. You can find that link on ksat.com. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And the time now is 549. I saw flashing lights over at I-10 and Callahan. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, that's exactly what we're seeing over here too, Steph. Uh, yeah, just watch out because we still have that closure there along the frontage road of I-10 heading westbound. Uh, this is actually the shot at Callahan East, but our friends at Transguide have been busy all morning showing us different viewpoints because we had a very busy start. This is actually first responders out there working to clear up some sort of spill that had happened following a vehicle fire that was reported in the area sometime around 3 this morning. To the westbound lanes, as I 
mentioned along the frontage road. So that's where we're seeing that closure, uh, but it's not really impacting the main lanes. As you can see, plenty of green out there, but still you want to watch out for the first responders. Giving you a wide look at the map, uh, looks like a crash may have happened somewhere in Leon Valley, just uh, outside or just within Loop 410. We'll get a closer look at that in the next few minutes, but again, not impacting the main lanes, so folks should be in the clear, but be on the lookout, especially throughout the weekend because we still have road work taking place along 35 on the northeast side. Uh, this is actually going to wrap up on July 8th, so we still have to get through it tomorrow night, but 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when we should see that work take place. During that time, alternating lane closures along the I-35 southbound frontage road from Olympia Parkway to Gateway Boulevard. And I know that's a lot of information to read. You can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures. It's important stuff. Know what's happening out on the roadways before you have to get hit the roads. Uh, but other than that, we're going to keep a close eye on this particular incident. So just watch out for those first responders. They've had a pretty busy morning as well, guys. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. I noticed we're all wearing navy blue. Yes, I'm sorry, scooching in a little bit closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all got the memo. I guess we're celebrating I'm the, wearing, the rain we got yesterday. Got oh, no, too. a splash yeah. of purple. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. I just thought I'd make sure that nice everyone touch. saw that. Yeah. Nice. It is, it, Thanks, uh, Justin. Looks good. Hey, uh, I saw a lot of pictures on social media. A lot of people heading down to the uh, coast, mm -hmm. uh, Port A, Rockport. Uh -huh. Wasn't so great yesterday or the day before because mm -hmm. we've had some rain and even this morning. But this weekend, it looks better. So if you have plans to go down there, all looks good. Uh, if you got some... Uh, beach time in your uh, plans this weekend. Here's a look at the radar right now. We've got some showers still trying to work their way through some of our southern counties. They're not having a whole lot of success making their way up to San Antonio. We just have not seen much here in town, but some spotty showers should go south down I-37 and a little closer look here at Bear County. Nothing, nothing. Just cloud cover right now. So uh, you probably won't have to uh, deal with much this morning. Now, during the day, could we see a spotty shower or two? Sure, but our rain chances are really pretty low, about 20% or so. The really heavy stuff's down here along the coast, and even that's going to start to move out a little bit later today. But a nice line of some heavy rain down here around Alice and Mathis, areas that need rain too. Just wish it would move a little further north and give us uh, some rain here this morning. It's just not in the car. So here's a look at the forecast. Uh, yes, yeah, some spotty showers this morning, most of it very, very light. And uh, by the afternoon, one or two more showers popping up, but uh, they're going to be few and far between. And the uh, rain chances, again, at about 20% or so. And by the time we get into tomorrow, high pressure builds in, and we say goodbye to our rain chances. Right now, 77. Uh, dew point is at 69. We've got a heat index of 79. The heat index will jump up some today. And as we look at the big picture here, not much going on to the west. This is where our ridge pipe pressure is located, and that's, going to, that's what's going to be shifting in. But as you look a little closer to the Texas Panhandle in Oklahoma, nice little complex of showers and storms. Severe thunderstorm watches out ahead of this. This moves down through Oklahoma City. Maybe, maybe holds on into parts of North Texas, but we are not going to see that here. Uh, we've got some of the heavy rain out in the Gulf of Mexico. We showed you some of those showers and storms. But this little area of low pressure is actually moving away and weakening, so that's why our rain chances are kind of uh, getting out of here. High pressure does build in from the west. That means some hot temperatures. Not just extremely hot today. We're talking 90s here in Texas, but you see the kind of heat they've been dealing with out west underneath this heat high. It's probably what we're going to be uh, looking at by the time we get into next week. Maybe not quite that hot, but triple digits for sure in the forecast. So our case at 12 hour forecast today, just 20% chance of rain temperatures make their way up to about 88 noontime. We'll go partly cloudy this afternoon, 94 the forecast high and the extended forecast. Well, I should mention heat indices will be up near 100, uh, but the extended forecast will look for a hot weekend and then triple digits. Yes, next week. Lots of sun too. 102 Tuesday, 102 on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. The time now is 557. So still ahead on GMSA, a story that has grabbed headlines around the globe. What Victor Wimbayama had to say about Spurs seemed to security allegedly slapping pop star Britney Spears and how Britney is responding. Plus, school supplies are expensive and not everyone can afford those classroom essentials. How a West Side Church is looking to help 3,000 families in need by August. And up next, a new drug proven to slow down Alzheimer's could be hitting the shelves soon. How it works and when insurance could cover it. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide looking over at I-10 and Callahan East where things are moving a little slowly. We're going to be checking back with Stephen Cavazos about the situation over there and your other roadways. We'll be right back.